Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. How the heck is life treating you? It's been months since we last updated this series looking at free to play titles on your PS4 you may have recently missed. So let's jump back in and highlight 10 completely free games from the last six months. Like usual, if you don't see anything you like on this list, I have another seven episodes full of goodies. I think that's all the housekeeping we need to do. Oh no, please like and subscribe to prevent my channel from dying. And let us all know which one of these games is best on the list. Anyway, let's do this. I'm starting with one of my personal favourites, Dauntless. From the outside looking in, the best way to describe Dauntless is like a Monster Hunter clone, and that's a pretty good place to start from, as you'll be hunting down huge behemoths and use their parts to craft armour and weapons. Each behemoth must be approached differently. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses in addition to elemental style differences. For example, an ice weapon works wonders on a fire behemoth. Now, months after release, Dauntless has added even more content, one of which is the Escalation mode, in which we can only take a single set of gear with us to take on five random behemoth battles without stopping. This could mean your choice of armour is weaker than expected. Oh, and did I mention you'll be fighting two behemoths at the same time? It's quite daunting, no, no pun intended at first, but after a while this becomes the best part of the game, I really mean that. A successful escalation run on the higher settings rewards us with a fight with a brand new behemoth, complete with new mechanics to learn. The best slayers in town can also take on Lady Lux Trials, in which she handpicks an unstoppable behemoth with unique modifiers enabled, and tasks us with taking it down in return for prestige loot. And while all this is going on, we shape our slayers to look how we want them to. And this is where Dauntless will try to grab your cash with a battle pass or a hunt pass in this scenario. It's quite tough to deny yourself sweet armor and emotes like these. <laughs> Have you tried it? Give us your review in the comments below. The chances of getting through this list without a battle royale title popping up are impossible. And here's one you may have missed, Cuisine Royale. This isn't the typical last man standing shooter. This game started as an April Fool's joke, which was so playable, it became its own game. Yes, you are not seeing things, pots and pans and other kitchenware make up much of the armour here. You'll use waffle irons to protect your rump and woks to protect your back. It's really strange. The maps and weapons are taken from the game Enlisted, a World War II MMO shooter, making this the strangest representation of war since Wolfenstein. Another way Cuisine Royale is different from other BR shooters is the class perks and witchcraft. I shit you not. After claiming kills on the battlefield, these souls can be used to pull out an alt attack. For example, one character can slow down time, another can turn into a werewolf-like creature and tear through enemies with its claws. Yeah, this game does not take itself too seriously at all. Squadding up with friends is a great deal of fun. I'm not sure if there is a great deal of longevity here, but I jump back in every so often for the sheer casual fun and randomness of it all. Cuisine Royale. Let's jump away from Battle Royale and over to the sequel of one of the best first person looter shooters in history, Destiny 2. After Activision and developers Bungie parted company, to attract new players, Bungie created Destiny 2 New Light. One thing to note is that this free to play version of the game contains all the year one content of Destiny 2, but nothing after that point. This is essentially a way to attract players in the hopes that they enjoy the game so much that they buy the future content going forward. In terms of content, the entire base campaign is here, the first raid is here too, and the raid lairs, and a decent amount of player versus player mode too. Destiny 2 includes the usual fashion frame concept, popularised by another free to play title, Warframe, which means by the end game, you'll be playing to unlock and build up a bank of cosmetics to look exactly how you want to. I think we all know about Destiny, so let's move on. Here's the most recent free to play game on the market at the time I'm writing this. The Darwin Project. I have a video breaking down everything, so I'll link it now. Unlike all other Battle Royale titles, The Darwin Project is much more about survival as it is hunting down eliminations. The frozen temperatures must be monitored to keep our characters warm enough using wood that we cut from trees to create campfires. On top of that are traps to be crafted, and each character class has key skills to gain the edge in battle. From scorpion style grappling hooks to Mercy's wings and even Aloy's drone, whatever your playstyle the game has you covered. 
In a unique turn, the Darwin Project allows for an 11th player to take part as the match director, choosing to reward people with materials, bring in supply drops, and even nuke entire areas of the map to keep combatants on their toes. If you're looking for a truly different take on Battle Royale and something more akin to the Hunger Games, Darwin Project is the perfect choice and it's free right now. Oh, and there's the usual unlockable styles too. Don't be stuck in spandex if that's not your thing. I unlocked a lobster trap. Strange. How about a mech game? This is Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation 2, or if you prefer, Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation 2. That's a long ass title anyway. The long running Gundam series returns with this six on six team focused online skirmish. To clarify for a moment, if a game is completely free to play, you do not ever need PS Plus to play with friends online. So ultimately you and five buddies can play together and win more often as communication is key to getting more victories. Ops 2 uses a, what shall I call it? rock paper scissors style approach with each of the three class types being superior to one other and disadvantaged against another this becomes the basis of attacking and you'll see on screen if you have a superior gundam to take the fight don't get me wrong you can win with any model but tactically you'll need to switch up your play when facing a superior mech the jack of all trades standard class will usually be victorious against the faster melee focused models those faster mechs will do very well against the support classes and the support class will regularly outfight the standard mechs. You see how it works? So choose your playstyle, wail on your foes with a sword or become the ultimate glass cannon. If mechs float your boat, give Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation 2 a try. Let's look into the world of espionage and assassination. Hitman 2 Starter Pack. Unlike the other free to play titles in this list, the Starter Pack does require PS Plus to play online. Primarily though, Hitman 2 is a single player game, so that doesn't really matter unless you really want to play with someone online. You'll be given the first part of the story, the first mission will be unlocked, which is more of a tutorial level than you'd expect, and without a doubt, it's the weakest level in the entire game, which is a real shame. There are 40 challenges to unlock, 5 levels of mastery to grind through, and the game in general is much more slower paced, allowing you to think through your actions, unlike many games on the market at the moment. I always feel that Hitman 2 doesn't get the love it deserves, which is a, another shame. So if this starter pack brings in new blood, I'm happy to talk about it here. I'll link a few of the missions I played on the channel to show you some of the strangest things we can do in this assassination sandbox. And yes, like usual, I broke the game completely. Here's a game which may not be for many people, but with Dungeons and Dragons renaissance going on at the moment, I thought it'd be good to include. This is Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realm. Damn it, these titles just keep getting longer. Idle Champions is about collecting characters from the Dungeons and Dragons series and combining their abilities to progress further down this never ending road. Ultimately, this is a formation strategy game, unlocking those new heroes and upgrading them constantly to reveal new abilities. On that road, we'll be finding epic gear and we'll be battling evolving foes with ever changing abilities of their own managing your squad, keeping them fit for battle and as a close-knit unit. When a single hero falls, your entire unit could be lost in an instant. Keeping the group together is so important. The devs upgrade the game regularly to include limited time events, with fan favourite D&D characters to add to your party. I know this is a niche audience, but I thought I'd throw it in there. And yeah, this is a ported over mobile game. Make of that what you will. Another free to play game for none of your hard earned money at all is Genesis, a controller only 5 on 5 battle arena. I know, controller only, strange isn't it? This deserves some attention right? Let's start with the characters, they look damn impressive, each character is completely unique from the next. Girls with big ass guns, they're here, animal human hybrid things, they're here too, and alien crossbreeds. They're here if you want to choose from those as well. The MOBA runs as you'd expect, using teamwork to take down the opposition base. But here's an addition. End the game early by acquiring enough kills, for example 60 in a match. That's right, dare you stick to the plan of the main objective, or go on a kill rampage to win the game that way. On the other side of Genesis is a single player and cooperative PvE mode. A brief story keeps events moving forward as you keep your team together and push towards victory over the AI. This is also a great way to learn aspects of the game and test your tactics, all while absorbing the story and lore. How do you feel about MOBAs anyway? Have they had their time to shine or do you think they'll be here forever? Next up is a Ubisoft game called Growtopia. 
as you can see, the primary audience for this one is children and it feels much like Terraria. Grotopia offers 64 player servers and is the typical MMO RPG you'd expect. Pick up a quest, do the work, return for another quest. As the name suggests, Grotopia is about building, or rather growing a world, by planting seeds and punching blocks to create your own space. I haven't played it, so I'm reading the press release right now, and one of the things it indicates here is that we can build lightsabers and even own our own dragons. So there must be quite a bit of depth here. With over 100 mini games to choose from, multiple crafting and trading options, and the best bit of all, Ubisoft costumes are available. Assassin's Creed anyone? So as I haven't tried this one, I need your help. Please let us know if this is any good. I'll be looking in the comments for help. I think we need to end on something more adult and bombastic. This is Wolfenstein Youngblood. But whoa, 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 don't get your hopes up too much. This is a trial title, but also don't get put off by that bombshell as it offers cooperative play for you and a buddy to try together. But there's also another kicker. It also needs PS Plus to work with a friend anyway. So this is a complete mess in terms of communication. So let's just concentrate on solo play because that is free to play. You will fill the shoes of BJ Blazkowicz's twin daughters as they liberate Paris from Nazis. Come on, that does sound epic, doesn't it? Get ready to hear terrible one-liners after every kill. And speaking of murder, some of the weapons here are strangely satisfying to use and shoot. Again, like Hitman, this game mode is attempting to attract players to buy the full game. So unlike the other eight titles on this list, this experience will be quite limited and replayability isn't really advantageous. So my advice is simple. If you need some gory gameplay to pass the time, give this a download. Otherwise, steer clear and find a game with far more content. I suggest Dauntless, I bloody love it. So there we have it, 10 more games to add to our list of free to play titles on the PS4. Many of these are cross platform, so give your Xbox buddies a shout and play alongside them. Hopefully one of these games is worth your precious time, and if it isn't, we have so many other episodes that you can look through right now to find the perfect game for you. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade, come talk to me on Twitter, I'm Adam Grenade over there, and I'll see you next time.